Hey everybody, this is the first video in our three-part series of uh, building a note app with Flutter using SQLite to store all of our notes and our data. So here I have a default empty Flutter application. So let's remove all of this code and make a stateless widget. And that's going to be our app class. Let's just return material app here. Home is going to be our note list widget, which we are going to build later on. And here we have this my app thing, just remove the my and we're using our app. Let's also set the title for our app to be notes. And now let's create our note list widget. So here in our project, we're going to create a new folder, which is going to be called views. And here we will create our note list. And since in this video, we're just going to be building out the UI and we're not going to manage any state and whatever, we'll just make this a stateless widget and call this note list. And now we have to import the material library. Okay, that's all good. Now let's go to our main.dart file and import our note list. Alt enter and it automatically recognized where the note list is located and let's import that. Now, since this widget is going to be like a standard page, Let's build a scaffold and give it an app bar. And this is going to be the standard app bar. Now this is an empty app bar, so let's give it a title. The title is going to be the text widget, which is going to say notes. Okay, now I think that we have some code that we should run this app. And here we have pretty much what we expected. It's just an app bar with a title. And the next thing we should do is build a floating action button that is going to take us to another page, which is going to be the add note page where we're going to write in the title of the note and the text on the note and save it. And also we should build out a list view, which is going to have cards that are going to display the title and part of the text from the note. So let's now go and build out our body. We're going to use the list view dot builder factory constructor. And here we have to pass in the item builder. So let's do that. Item builder is a function that we pass in, which determines how our widgets should be built. And in our item builder, we take in the context and the index. I think it's by that order. Let me take a look. Yeah, we take the context and then we take the index. And now what we should return is a standard card and it's going to have a child, which is going to be a column. And we're using a column in order to put our two text widgets that we're going to use below one another. So now let's give it the children attribute and let's build out our title and our text. So our text is going to be here. Some title. Now let's cut this and paste it in here and some text. And now let's save this and take a look at how this looks. All right, this looks like something, but not quite what we want. The first thing we should do is put our title and our text over here to the left. And we're going to do that by going main axis alignment. Actually not main axis, but cross axis because the cross axis in the column is the horizontal alignment. So let's go cross axis alignment start and it put it very nicely over here. Okay, now that we have this all to the left, we should add some padding to add some more space between the edges of our card and the text. So let's go over here, add padding, and we're going to have it be 30 from the top and from the bottom. We're going to have it to be 13 from the left and 22 from the right. Now save and reload this. And now this looks a little bit more, how should I say, spaced out. Now, since our title and our text should not be equal in size and in font weight, Let's make our title a little bit bigger. So let's add the style attribute. It's going to be the text style. We're going to set the font size to be 25. Now save this. All right, make it bold. Save this again. And also make our text gray. So our title stands out more than the actual text. So let's go style, text style, color, colors.gray. And now let's save this. Okay, this is nice, but let's add a shade of maybe 600. Okay, now this looks a lot better. But since our text in our notes probably is not going to be this short, let's put some lorem ipsum to see how will our app behave when we have a lot of text. 
Okay, now that we have a bunch of text, let's reload the app. And since we, if we have this long of a, of a note, we don't want it all to be displayed in the card, but let's just say that we want just, I don't know, two lines. And now save this. And it's going to be two lines, but maybe someone will think this is all since we don't have three dots at the end or something like that. And the way we're going to fix it is by going overflow and say text overflow dot ellipsis save and now it has these nice th three dots at the end and i think our code is getting a little bit too cluttered up so let me extract this to a new widget which is going to be a private class note title and we're going to return our note title and let's put that over there and let's extract our note text and put it in another stateless widget. Okay, now let's use it over here. Remove the same colon and add the... Okay, save this and this looks exactly the same. Let me put some space between these two. Let's make it like four. Save. And this looks a lot better, I think. So that's pretty much it for our notes list widget we just need to add one more thing and that's going to be our floating action button and let's just go floating action button and we need to provide the on pressed functionality let's just leave it as an empty function for now and give it a child so since this is going to be the add action we should add the icon which is displayed with this little plus let's call that let's save this and this looks pretty good Okay, so now let's create a new view, which is going to be our note view. And again, go with the stateless widget, note, and import the material library. Whenever someone clicks on our floating action button, we should take him to our note view. So let's go navigator.push. We pass in our context and we give it a route, which is going to be the material page route. And we need to provide it a builder which is basically going to serve as our widget that's going to be displayed and just give it, I think we only need to give it the context and we're just going to return our note view, import that and save. And this was reloaded, I think. Let's click add. And it took us to this black screen. That's pretty much what should have been done since we don't have a scaffold that styles any of this properly. If I added a scaffold and reload it, it would be nice and white and whatever. And also another thing that we should do, since this view is going to be used both for adding and for editing our notes, when we click on any of our notes over here, it should also take us to this note view. So here we have our card and we're going to wrap that in a gesture recognizer. And what gesture, actually it's gesture detector. So whenever we have a widget that is not by default clickable, we just wrap it in this gesture detector and we can register a lot of gestures that the user can make. You see we have tab, double tap, horizontal drag and whatever. You can explore this by yourself, but we only need on tap. And it's going to do the same thing we're doing when we click on the floating action button. So let's copy that code and paste it over here and save it. Okay, now that this is reloaded, when we click on this, it takes us to our note view. Okay, now the next thing we should do is build out the note view. We need our app bar, let's build it out. And for now, we're going to say add note. But since we, oh, actually, we need to pass in the title, the text, and this. All right. And I said earlier that this is going to be used for both adding and editing. We're going to introduce some logic when we build out this whole screen to know when we're adding the note and when we're editing. So it's just now going to say add note. And we're going to have a body, which is going to be column would serve nicely, which is going to have some children. And those children are going to be two text fields. Let's just create those two text fields real quick. And now let's save this to see if this looks like something. Okay, we have our two text fields. But now what we should do is 
add like the hint text over here so we know that this is the title and this is the text. We do that by adding the input decoration and saying hint text over here to be note title. And let's copy this over and put it over here and saying this is the note text. Save this and okay this looks nice. Okay, since this looks a little bit ugly being like clipped here to the sides, let's add padding to our column. Go here, add padding and put 40. And this now looks a lot better. Now let's go with the container and give it the height of 8. Save this. Okay, now this looks nicer. And now we are going to have three buttons over here. The first button is going to be save, the second is going to be discard, and the third is going to be delete. But the delete button is going to be displayed only when we're editing the note. So now let's build a row, since we're going to display them horizontally, and put some children in there, and go material button, and say on pressed, now leave it empty, saying child, giving it some text, saying save and we're going to set the color to be colors.blue let's see how this looks okay and set our text color to be white okay now the next button is going to be our discard button which is going to be just like if we think a note it's just going to discard everything and return us back to our old page or if we're editing the note it's just going to discard all the changes we made so now let's add another button saying discard and make that gray and make another button which is going to be delete which is going to be red save it and all right okay now that we have these three buttons what i want to do is space them out evenly across this whole space that we have so we're going to do that with main axis alignment dot space even. And this looks a little bit better, but uh, the thing you probably noticed is that we have a lot of duplicate code that's just repeating itself. The thing we're going to do is create another stateless widget, which is going to be private and be called note button. And we're just going to copy one of these buttons and put them over here. And now since they're not all going to be completely same, we're going to pass the attributes that differentiate these three buttons. And the first is going to be the text. The second is going to be the color. And not currently, but later, it's going to be the on pressed event. And now let's just create all of these attributes. Okay, and now let's just set our text to be the text attribute, the color to be the color attribute, and the on press to be the on pressed attribute. Okay, and now let's just use that over here and have our text being save our color to be blue and our on pressed event to be empty for that. And now let's cut this and paste it two more times and go discard. It's going to be gray and our delete is going to be red. And now remove all of this code, save this. And it looks exactly as it looked like before, but now it looks a lot cleaner. So that's pretty nice. And also let me add some space between our text fields and our buttons all right this looks a little bit better but also let me change up the width of the button if that's possible maybe to 100 150 okay that's too much 100 looks nice but maybe this would help them get spaced out evenly okay 120, nope, right around 100 is pretty good, let's put the height at 50, okay now they look a little bit bigger, okay the next thing we should do is center this thing, let's put the main axis alignment to be center, save this, 
Okay, now this is pretty much centered. And this looks okay to me, I think. And now let's provide behavior for our save, discard and delete buttons. Currently, all of them do the same thing. Let's just return to the previous page. So there's nothing special about that, but let's put in the functionality of it and save. When we save and pops the screen, everything perfect. Okay, now the next thing we should do is add some conditional rendering so we can see when we're editing and when we're adding a new note so that this text can display add or edit and that we can see if this should be displayed at all. So the way we're going to do that, here I'm just going to create an enum which is going to be like note mode and it's either going to be editing or adding and that note mode we're going to have to pass to our note widget. Right, make this a little bit easier. Final note mode. And this is going to have to be passed to our note widget. Okay, and here let's add some conditional rendering with the short and diff statement. So if note mode is equal to note mode dot adding, we're going to display add note. But if it's not equal to that, we're going to display edit note. And this is not going to be, this is going to be a column. So if you're not familiar with this kind of syntax, this is basically a short and diff statement. This would be the same if we wrote like this. Now this is not syntactically correct, but okay, if note mode is equal to note mode dot adding, then we would return add note and else we would return edit note. So this statement is pretty much the equivalent of that, but just in a very short way. So let's go to our note list and pass that in because here we're getting an error when we're not passing in the note mode. So here when we click on a card, it's going to need our note mode to be note mode editing. But over here, when we're adding the note, it's going to be our note mode dot adding. Now let's save this. And this crashed the whole app for some reason. It's probably because I made too much changes. Let me rerun the app and we'll see what we got. Alright, so we have our app up and running again and it looks like it isn't crashing. So when we click on this card, it should display edit note. And that's exactly what happens. And we, when we click over here, we should get add note, which is exactly what happens. Now let's add conditional rendering to see if our note button delete should be displayed or not. So we are going to do pretty much the same thing. We're going to display the if the note mode is equal to note mode adding. Actually, if it's editing, then we're going to display our note button. But if it's not, we're just going to display an empty container. Let's save this. Actually, let me restart the whole app and go over here. It's displayed. When we go over here, our delete button isn't displayed. But what is displayed is this unnecessary padding. So this does not look quite right. We can fix that by removing this and wrapping this with a padding widget. Go ahead, padding. And now this is all messed up. Let me just remove the node button and add padding over here. And now wrap all of this in our if statement. Okay, now this looks a lot better. Let me restart the app. Okay, when we click over here, the lead button is displayed correctly. When I click over here, it's not displayed at all. I think that's pretty much it for this video. The next part is going to be coming out in a couple of days where we implement the logic of creating and saving and displaying nodes. But it's going to be all with the local storage. And then in the third video, we're going to add the SQL, the SQLite library for Flutter. And this is going to be a full app working with a database. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you found it helpful and that's pretty much it, I'll see you next time.